a little bit of non-necessarily active Seahawks training camp news. It was uh, announced today that Rashad Penny is going to retire from uh, the NFL. Seahawks kicked the tires on Penny a couple of weeks ago, had him in a camp. Former first-round pick, as I said, played with the Eagles last year. You looked him in a preseason on a couple of the carries, and it just looked like his legs weren't there anymore. He just did not have the same burst or speed that he once did. This has happened to a couple guys recently who've come in through here in Seattle. It's a sad sight to see where you get a couple leg injuries, and as far as medical science has come, there's still the part that there's a limit to how far it can go at times, and that it does sometimes rob these guys of their career and of what their potential could have been. People will look at the Rashad Penny pick and they will tell you right out the gate that it was just a fail pick and a fail pick from the, the jump and it was easy to see. And I think that this is one where when I look at it, I would say those people would probably t- tend to be people that lean towards the analytic side of things, meaning that the analytic people tell you about running backs now, you never draft a running back, but except after the fourth round. And they are very, very hard-lined in their approach on this one. One could almost call it near fundamentalist in its approach. And so they will tell you this. So if you take a guy in the first round, they'll say to you just right off the rip, well, you just don't do that. But there's another side of those out there like myself that fall in a different camp of this that don't quite operate with that hard line of an outlook on it because this becomes a market opportunity from my, my aspect of it when you look at running backs being that First round running backs don't tend to get taken at all anymore. Maybe once every two, three, four years, we'll get one guy taken in the first round. This means there are no first round running backs anymore. There are no no guys that are that good anymore that they suck now. No, because the whole thing isn't about the fact that analytic people tell you the running backs suck now. They tell you that they're more, their their value is more based upon the offensive line and, you know, that you've got a lot of other factors like their health and all and how much you got to pay them factors in. It's everything about that's nothing to do necessarily with the ability of the player as to why they don't want you to take the guy in the second round. The ability they would agree with you on. Oh yeah, Kenneth Walker is a great talent. Oh yeah, Charbonnet is a great talent. But there's this, 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 and this. When you look at Rashad Penny, he was a guy, yes, who had the injury come up. But is this a situation where your organization saw this guy that was heavily injury prone in college and then you made a pick out of him because you just love the talent? Or did he have the cleanest medical evaluation in some in just about your, I don't want to say full history, but we heard the Hawks organization talk about Penny in this way when he came out that he had as clean a medical evaluation of any college prospect they had seen, that there were no injuries in college. And now it completely fell apart when he got to the pro level. But my point on this is being that that's not necessarily then an example of why the analytic folks went out on this one. That's as much as anything, bad luck. Because when Rashad Penny was out there and he was playing and he was able actually to run at full steam and that was rare moments of that, I'll give you that. But in NFL history, on a minimum of 750 attempts for running backs, so you don't get the sample sizers in there, right? You get the guys that actually have had a good amount of carries, almost two full seasons, three full seasons worth of carries under the belt. Jamal Charles leads NFL history with a 5.4 yard per carry average. Rashad Penny averaged in his NFL career 5.6 yards per carry. Now he has about... 350 carries. He's going to be short of that 750 attempts. But it does show there was a difference level of talent there within Rashad Penny combined with those clean medical evaluations. And the analytical folks will say to you on this, yeah, but this is part of our evaluation is that running backs tend to get very injured very quickly and this da, 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 da. Not this fast, not that quickly. Not kind of right out the gate. Not for a guy necessarily that you you saw that was so durable in college. Usually some of the durable stuff will show at least a little bit of its rear its ugly head just at least slightly at the college level before you're going to get to the pros on that. But it struck in the bad way, but it wasn't, to me, an example of fact Rashad wasn't a great back or didn't have great ability. Because even in that 5.6 yard per carry average that he does sit on right now, how many of those carries were him dragging that leg with him up the field as he was last season when they did get the few carries that he did get? But a kid that did have a lot of talent, and to me, not one that I walk away from here on this saying, there's a lesson as to why you don't take running backs late in the first round. And before we call him a first round running back, let's do that with a little bit of an asterisk. I believe he was the 32nd overall first round running back. So it was almost a second round pick where you stood and you took him at. And that's that market opportunity part I talk about because yes, there are still on a yearly basis, first round running backs. It's just that they do tend to go into the second round. So that's to me then a market opportunity for a team to take advantage of that. I'm getting a difference level making talent in the second round who should go in the first, but isn't going there because of other things that have to do with not his talent. And that's, I think, and does remain the case. And this is a little bit of, I think, what caused John Schneider to be drawn towards Walker and Charbonnet, even in back-to-back years, because that principle remained in play 